Let's raise our hands to Father Yahweh. Please stand. O oh, great Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is your servant, David Yasef, Levi Hawkins, seed of your servant, Israel Hawkins, in unity with the body of priests. I approach your throne in the great and honorable name of Yahshua, who is high priest, king, and judge over your house. Father Yahweh, we are present here during your feast uh, to learn more, to drink of this living water that is flowing through your servant to us, Father Yahweh. And we pray, Father, that we will uh, have this message flow through to the people in the world. Father Yahweh, we thank you so much for everything you bless us with. And we ask you your protection. We ask you your guidance. We ask you your blessings. We, we thank you for your great house established in these last days and the message that is going forward. We thank you, Father, for this lesson with this um, class here, and we ask your blessings upon the speakers and on the listeners. Father, in the name and by the authority of your Son, Yeshua Messiah, I ask you all these things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, remain standing as we introduce the, um, the deacon, Deacon uh, Yasef Franza. You may be seated. Oh. Praise Yahweh. Um, welcome to the, uh, this afternoon's uh, workshop. We're going to be continuing on the 821 prophetic word uh, study that we've been doing, all feast. And uh, we're going to be picking up at the bottom of the second column on page 14, uh, where the title in bold print, Mankind was assigned only 70 years by Yahweh. And continuing on here, uh, Mankind was created by Yahweh for one purpose. Mankind is assigned only 70 years to live and train for a position in the greatest kingdom in the universe. That position includes eternal life. And if you notice there, eternal life is a position. So um, what, what I decided to do when I read this was take the uh, bold print, the title, Mankind Was Assigned Only 70 Years by Yahweh, and place it in the Amatria. And uh, the numbers, the following numbers came up. 5521, 3168, and 528. Those numbers... Uh, can also be placed in the margin where the title is for a future reference. And uh, basically, to give you a brief uh, definition of those numbers, in the Hebrew, uh, 5521 is sukkah, booth, temporary dwelling, tabernacle, which we're in for this feast at this time. We're in Yahweh's tabernacle. Uh, Hebrew uh, number 3168, which was a second number, means Yahweh strengthens. And as you know, we go to the feast, we get strengthened by the messages that are coming forth. And the third number was 528, the, which meant the Egyptian god Amun, the hidden one. So basically, when you tie all these together, there's a scripture that pops up that you can put in your margin as well, 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8, which speaks about our bodies being likened to a sukkah, our life here on earth is temporary, and Yahweh has given us a choice. He strengthens us to live righteously through our obedience to him, or we can live in Egypt and give our lives to the hidden one of this world. So Yahweh says, choose whom you will serve. So I thought that was very interesting, and again, you can put that uh, in your notes uh, in the margin, and for, again, for a future reference. Also, uh, if you look at Psalms 90.10, it supports the, that uh, title as well. And I'll quote it to you. Psalms 90.10, the days of our lives are 70 years. They are 80 years if we have the strength. Yet our strength, our best years are troubled and sorrowful. For they quickly pass and we fly away. So just take note of those scriptures and again, write it in the margin. And it supports the points that are being raised uh, through pastors' teachings. 
Continuing on, on page 15 now, on the prophetic word, the book of Yahweh, the sacred scriptures, is a written contract for mankind, from Yahweh. It is written, it cannot be added to or taken away from. Okay, in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, you shall not add to the word which I command you, nor shall you take away from it, so that you can keep the laws of Yahweh your Father, which I command you. And again, when you're doing this study, you can take any scriptures that support this particular scripture, Deuteronomy 4, 2. And there's a Proverbs chapter 30, verse 6, which is, in, which is in complete unity with this scripture. And I'll read it. Um, Do not add to this word the law and the prophets, or he will reprove you, and you will be found a liar. And next to that, you can also add Ecclesiastes 3, uh, verse 14. I know that whatever Yahweh does, it will be forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken away from it. Yahweh acts, and men will give him reverence. So you see, having these scriptures in your arsenal, so to speak, can, that correlates with one another, you can have it there for a future teaching lesson. So remember to always put in the margin uh, scriptures that support the points that are being raised through pastors' writings. And, and keep that in the forefront of your mind. Uh, continuing on in Revelations chapter 22, verses 12 through 21. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according to his work will be. I am the first, the last, the beginning and the end. And blessed are those who keep, practice his laws, that they will have right to the tree of life and will enter in through the gates into the city. Yahweh Shema. For outside are dogs and sorcerers and whomongers and murderers and worshippers of God's Elohim and everyone who professes to love, yet practices breaking the law. In verse 16, I, Yahshua, have sent my messenger, and we know who that is, that's Pastor Israel Abel Hakahan, to testify to you these things in the congregation of the house of Yahweh. I am the root and offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who is thirsty come, and whoever will, let him take the water of life freely and the water of life you know when I looked at the scripture and I said well you know what is the water of life what is he talking about here and then what came to my mind was uh, what Yahshua you know spoke of the woman uh, at the well about the same water of life and that was in Yachanan chapter 4 verses 13 to 14 and it says Yahshua answered and said to her, Whoever drinks this water will again become thirsty, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never become thirsty, for the water that I will give him will become in him like a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So we see that uh, it, you know this pure water represents the laws of Yahweh, and it's the spirit of Yahweh, and this is something we have to... Uh, you know, apply to our lives and, and, and develop within us. And continuing on in verse 18 of uh, Revelations 22, for I testify to everyone who hears, everyone who hears, for I testify for everyone who hears. Now this word hears, for a quick definition you know, from what we've been taught by pastor over the years is basically with the intent to listen and obey. But it's not just listening. Obey. Listen and obey. So these words uh, are, have a major significance and have power. And basically, if you put it together, for I testify to everyone who hears the words of this prophecy, that means we're listening and obeying the words of the prophecy being taught to us, of this book. And if any man will add to these things, it will come to pass that he will add to himself the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man will take away from the words of this book of the prophecy, this prophecy, it will come to pass that he will take away his part of the book of life and out of Yahweh Shema and from the things which are written in the book. These are serious commands here and not to be taken lightly and which brings to mind like uh, what you can have in the margin here, you can put down, well, what does it mean to add or take away? 
And when you really reflect upon the scriptures that are written, what are we actually doing when we're adding and taking away from what Yahweh has that was already made perfect? Did you ever think about that? When we put our own spin on things and we add things, what are we doing? We actually make ourselves teachers of Yahweh himself. And we don't want to be found in those shoes. And if we are, we need to get a new pair. So, you know, it makes us, you know, become an adversary to him. And it opens the doors to all the curses that we see taking place in this world to, uh, this day. You know, Yahweh teaches us how to prevent these things through our submission and obedience uh, to his per perfect way, his perfect laws, his way of life. It's not to be taken lightly. And again, you can put these phrases and pastor brings out or these questions that raise into your margin and you can answer them based on the teachings of the house of Yahweh. And anytime you're not sure, always call a Kahan. And they're there to guide and help you through it. And continuing on in verse 20. He testifies these things, says, Surely I come quickly. Hallelujah, Yahweh, let it be so. Come, Yeshua Messiah. Again, another phrase there. Come quickly. What does that mean? Come quickly. So basically, what I did was, to help my understanding of the meanings of this, I put that word, those two words, come quickly in the Yamachia, and I had basically three Yamachias that, that came up. Uh, I'm sorry, not Yamachia, uh, Books of Israel, in the Books of Israel search, and I had three that uh, came up. One that stood out that was profound was the Eighth Book of Israel, Part 1, uh, verse, uh, Chapter 5, Verse 126, and I know I don't have time to go through it all, but I'm going to read that one there for you. The other two I have to forego. But here, the Savior writings, and I'm quoting from Pastor, he said, Revelations 22, 12, and behold, I come quickly. He's going to come. Don't let him catch you off guard. Don't let him catch you off guard. Brethren, make up your mind. Now be sincere. Be sincere. Repent and be converted to Yahweh's laws and join your brothers and sisters with love. Ahab. Teaching Ahab. Teaching Yahweh's way. That's past his uh, definition of these scriptures, okay? And you can put that in the margin next to Revelations 22, verse 20. And continuing on, now on uh, the prophetic word, page 15, entitled, The Worthless World. The serpent called the devil, Satan, does not want mankind to receive Yahweh's reward, Yahshua's reward, Yahshua's reward. And it reminds me of, again, Revelations 22, 12. My reward is with me. Well, what is it that we need to do to receive this reward? And basically, the answer is in Matitia 11, chapter 11, verses 13 to 14. And I'll read. For all the prophets and the laws prophesied till Yachanan. And if you are willing to accept it, willing to accept it, accept it. This is the strength of Yahweh, Elia, which are, as we know, the laws and prophecies, which was to come. So basically, we have to accept the laws and the prophecies, as stated in these scriptures. By our great high priest, Yahshua Messiah's teachings as well. Satan does not want mankind over her and her gods. Continuing on in the prophetic word, Satan and her guards are evil. They became adversaries of Yahweh and mankind. So we can see that Satan was lifting herself up, usurping her own authority, trying to be, uh, have her authority over Yahweh's. And which leads into a, a definition that has passed as brought out over the years. God means to lift yourself up. And that's basically what was occurring here. And we can read this in the prophetic word again on uh, page 15, Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more subtle and crafty, I guess full of trickery and deceit, 
than any other beast of the field which Yahweh had made. And she said to the women, Has Yahweh indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You know, bear, bear in mind that the story that's being told here, you know, wasn't immediate. It was over a period of time. And, and I can see that Satan was trying to place in the heart and mind of, of Eve the doubt that was necessary in order to deceive her and to cause her to fall. And, to, you know, and as if some, you know, Yahweh was trying to keep something from her. You know, as you read on the scripture, continuing on in Genesis 3, verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent, We cannot eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh has said, You shall eat of it, you shall not eat of it, eat it, nor shall you touch it, or you will die. And the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for Yahweh knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be as God's Elohim, knowing righteousness and evil. Again, you can see here that Satan was implanting in Eve's heart and mind doubt, seeds of doubt, planting them there. And you know, and, and we've got to be mindful that the same thing will occur to you know us if we're not careful. There's a, there'll be somebody that will come upon us and try to plant seeds of doubt, but we have to, you know, you know, how would we handle that? You know, so we have to trust and rely on Yahweh, and the counsel we get from Yahweh's counsel is to uh, handle these situations as they arise upon us. So, you know, uh, so, you know, and it ends, verse 5 says, knowing righteousness and evil. And, you know, that, that's, you know, you don't want to be experienced in practicing evil sin as the gods. Okay, we don't want to uh, participate in that. Continuing on in the prophetic word, do you notice verse 5? Evil as the gods. Remember, Yahweh is not a god. In fact, that's what sets us apart from any other group out there. We do not refer to our Heavenly Father and Creator Yahweh as being a god, even among those who use the name Yahweh. So, you know, and, and what further that point is, you know, uh, in Exodus 5 2, you know, when uh, Pharaoh, you know, did not know who Yahweh was and didn't acknowledge Yahweh, and, uh, and he basically, you know, was uh, coming against Yahweh and, and, saying, and, and, and saying things like, well, well, I'll read it from Exodus 5.2. Then Pharaoh said, who is Yahweh that I should obey him and let Israel go? I do not know Yahweh, and I will not let Israel go. So we can see there uh, that, you know, Yahweh was not listed among the gods. And that uh, he even created those beings who rebelled against him, that made themselves into gods. They became gods as they were created beings on behalf of Yahweh, but they rebelled. And to further that point is Yekitskia 28:2, uh, where it, where it it, it discussed uh, discussed that in detail. And it says, "Son of man, say to the prince of Tyre, this is what Father Yahweh says: Because your heart is lifted up." And you have said, I am a God, El. I sit in the seat of a God, El, in the midst of the seas. I, Yahweh, therefore say to you, yet you are a created being and not the Almighty, though you set your heart to be the Almighty. So, again, we, we don't want to be in that position. And continuing uh, on, uh, on page 15, it says, Read the words of the Savior in Metitia, chapter 7, verses 18 to 20. A righteous tree cannot bring forth fruit of iniquity, nor can an evil tree bring forth fruits of righteousness. Every tree which does not bring forth righteous fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. By their fruits, you will know them. Well, it's just like having a tree that bears fruit out in your garden. You know, the fruit, is, you know, is basically what it produces that, from that tree, what it's produced. It's the same connection that, that you can make with mankind. We either produce righteousness or evil. And basically that's our choice. And continue on in the prophetic word. Uh, Exodus 32, chapter, uh, chapter 32, verses 6 through 7. So the next day the people rose early and offered burnt offerings and brought 
peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat, drink, and rose to play. Rose early. Eagerness to play. Those are profound words. And the word play is another interesting word to look up. Uh, I looked it up in the Hebrew, Strong's Hebrew Dictionary. It's word number 6711, meaning to laugh outright in merriment or scorn. By implication to sport, laugh, mock, play, make sport. You know, so you see insults and put downs and, you know, foolish behavior in this. Continuing on in verse 7. Then Yahweh said to Moshe, go down there, go da get down. For our people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt have become corrupt. Now, this is another word, you know, and you could put the word play that I just mentioned right there in the margin uh, to support that. Now, so how do we become corrupt? And basically, from that same, the same magazine, you look down to the next line, it says, that is God worship. That's how we become corrupt. Through the acts of God worship. Okay, so you underline that, and it's already underlined for you by pastor. But you circle that word corrupt, draw an arrow, and point down. Okay, that, that's where you need to go. Now, continuing on, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 6 and 7. Now, these things are examples for us with the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they, are lust, they so lusted. So do not become worshipers of God's Elohim, as some of them were. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink. Again, this word rose up to play. And again, we just, you had that definition. So if you can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, it states, Now all these things took place with them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, on whom the ends of the earth ages have come. And of course, this refers to the time period we're in now, the last three and a half years. Okay, and did you notice, continuing on the prophetic word, that the word, that the foolish waste of time is evil. Foolish waste of time is evil as the gods. Underline that. That's so important and so profound. Okay, so in conclusion, my brothers, I ask that you bear all the, uh, these messages and teaching points that were coming out uh, by the various speakers and use the margins. Study with a new intent. Make time to study. And not just read over the words and the verses. Study them. Look them up. Define them. Get the source where you got the information from. Put it in your newsletters and in your book of Yahweh. And this will help you to become the true teachers of righteousness that Yahweh desires for each and every one of us. And I thank you for your time. Yahweh bless your understanding. I ask that you please stand as I welcome to the podium bar. You love teacher, the great Sophania Hawkins. Shalom, everyone. Please be seated. Always blessings be with each and every one of you. This is our last class here for the afternoon workshops of Tabernacles 2021. And remember, these classes are designed to teach us how to study and how to connect the scriptures. That's why we're going through this here, teaching us how we can gain a greater understanding, how we can study more efficiently and proficiently. Okay, so we're going to pick up in continuing here in the 821 prophetic word. We're going to start on the top uh, column on page 16, okay, where the previous speaker left off. Play ball, as the uh, pastor begins here. Playing ball is the greatest God worship. Now, you know, I, w I highlight those things when pastor makes statements like that. I highlight that greatest God worship. Literally millions of tax dollars go into stadiums each year. So many hours are wasted. And there you get a key. It's wasted. It's wasted. You see what the gods, how the gods waste things. They waste their time. Wasted by the oldest to the youngest watching a foolish ball game. Mankind was given 70 years to train for the highest positions in the universe, and he tosses it away. Okay, and notice that's underlined. He tosses it away. Pastor's wanting us to pick up on that. So whenever he underlines something, pick up on those words. Tossing it away. Every week of his life on watching a ball game. 
And, you know, for your notes now, you can connect that with Matthew chapter 13 that talks about the, the parable of the sower. And remember, one of them, you know, gave it up for the cares of this life. They, they, they just, uh, they threw away the kingdom. It, it meant nothing to them. So those are the, the, the type of notes there that you want to make in, in the margins. And you could also write Ephesians 5 verse 16, which talks about redeeming the time because the days are evil. So not wasting time. Continuing back in the prophetic word, read this, Isaiah 65, verses 2 through 5. Verse 2, I've spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. So pay attention, it's a rebellious people who walk in a way which is not right after their own thoughts. So here we can ask ourselves, well, what are my thoughts? You know, as we're studying here, what are my thoughts? Uh, is my mind seeking Yahweh's kingdom and his righteousness? Do my thoughts line up with the teachings of the house of Yahweh? You know, that's an opportunity for us to ponder that as we're studying. Back to the prophetic word here, verse 3. A people who continually act defiantly against me to my face, who offer sacrifices to the dead and offer their children to deadly sexually transmitted diseases, who assemble and spend the night keeping memorials for the dead. Well, what is the memorial for the dead that this world keeps? It's Halloween. It's Halloween. You want to write that in the side note there. And you can think about the things pastors taught us. More money is spent on Halloween than any of the other holidays. It's the biggest money-generating holiday. So those are the type of margins uh, notes that you can take there for your studies. Who eats swine's flesh? So back to uh, back continuation here in verse 4. Who eats swine's flesh? Think about that. Who eats swine's flesh? Who allows, who tells you it's okay to eat swine's flesh? Catholic Church. They say there's nothing wrong with it. You know, these, this will get our mind to thinking. This is how we should study these things. And the broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Okay, and for your notes, what's the vessels here he's talking about? The, the blood vessels. That, that abomination is running in their blood vessels. Their blood vessels are full. They're tainted with this defilement. Verse 5. Who say, stand by yourself. Do not come near me, for I am holier than you. Okay, well, what does that phrase mean? Ask yourself, what does it mean? You know, don't tell me what to do. It's a don't tell me what to do attitude. These are a stench, Yahweh says, in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. And, you know, think about it. What will their end be? Okay, notice that scripture, rebellious people. What's going to be their end? They're going to be judged unfit. They're going to be un judged, judged unfit and destroyed in their sins. Malachi 4, verse 1, speaks about a burning that's coming. You can write that down for your side note. That's going to be the judgment. Okay, so continuing in the prophetic word. Remember, the house of Yahweh was taken away from mankind. So now we're going to see a little bit more about this. Pastor's going to explain this. Let's understand this point. Genesis 3, 22 through 24, continuing here in the prophetic word. Then Yahweh said, Behold, the man has become like one who has begun to know righteousness and evil, and now he must not be allowed, it's underlined, pay attention to it, not be allowed to put out his hand and also take of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So here's another time to consider. What, is it, what does it mean that mankind must not be allowed here you know, to, to have this eternal life? Uh, if not, what would be the result? He would just suffer forever. You know, think of it as the pain increases, he would just continue living you know, so, so that's a point right there, as pastors explained. We could put that in the Israel says and really get a great understanding of that, why that was cut off, why if they would continue, they would be absolutely miserable. Mankind would be miserable if Yahweh would allow them continue to living in sin because it brings forth death. So those are the types we think about. That's what we can think about here as we're studying. Okay, back in the prophetic word in verse 23. Therefore Yahweh sent him out of the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed Caribbean on the east of the garden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Well, ask yourself, do you know what the flaming sword is? Look it up. Here's an opportunity for us to look it up. You know, you can, uh, you can put that in the usual says... And you'll get, you'll get like two pages of information on the flaming sword. But the flaming sword is the carnal mind. It's the carnal mind there that Yahweh gave to mankind. He said, I'm giving you this, now overcome it. 
You know, it's for us to prove to him that we can overcome. And if you look up, if you look up flaming sword, you know, here's just a little bit of excerpt if you can see that. I'm not going to read those, but and I know they're small, but I just wanted to show you, you know, the usual says program, you put in flaming sword, and you know, here's the first three passages of two pages worth of information on flaming sword. So if you don't know, it's perfect time to use the usual says program and look it up. Okay, so back to uh, let's continue here in the prophetic word magazine. Genesis chapter 4, verses 10 through 14. Let's continue. And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So Yahweh pointed out here, he's going to point out the sin of Canaan. And for your notes here, you can connect this with 1 Yachanan 3, 11 through 12, which says, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, okay, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and murdered his brother. Why did he murder his brother? Because his works were evil and his brothers were righteous. So that's a perfect scripture you write down there in the, in the side note there um, in the margin to connect with Genesis 4 verse 10. Okay, let's continue now in verse 11. Back in the prophetic word. So now you are cursed from the earth. Okay, you're cursed from the earth. It's underlined. Which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. So think of that phrase. What does that, what does that phrase mean, cursed from the earth? You know, these are things as we go through, we can, you know, we should be able to study these things and, you know, really think about what pastor's trying to get us to understand. Well, it means some microbes. They've been defiled. They, uh, the earth no longer produces like it once did. One of the prophets said, the earth doesn't have its strength anymore. Its strength is diminished, and we see that. So, you know, these are things here to consider. Okay, let's go back to the prophetic word. Verse 12. When you work the soil, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive, and you will be ever searching for peace. Notice, ever searching for peace on the earth. Well, Cain couldn't find the only thing that Yahweh can offer. Only Yahweh offers peace. No one, nobody else offers peace. They, they, they don't. They don't have the teachings that bring forth peace. So this is a great time to make another note in the margin there of Psalm 119, 165. Okay, it should be up there on the screen for us now to look at. Psalm 119, 165. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing will offend them or cause them to fall because of unbelief or sin. Okay, so let's go back now to continuing in Genesis 4, and we're going to be on page, I mean, uh, verse 13 here, back in the, uh, continuing here in the prophetic word. And Cain said, Cain said to Yahweh, my consequences, notice my consequences are greater than I can bear. Well, you know, Cain didn't want righteousness, he wanted his own way. And when we don't want righteousness and we want our own way, what are we going to receive? Consequences. Consequences. You could you could write down there Deuteronomy twenty eight, right in the side note there. It Deuteronomy twenty eight, fifteen through sixty eight shows us the consequences uh, from 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 wanting our own way and not Yahweh's righteousness. Verse fourteen, back in the prophetic word. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. And if you really you know if you're you you know you're paying attention to how Yahweh words these things, consider that. You know, look at that wording. He wasn't driven out. His actions, he chose that. His actions to leave the house of Yahweh, you know, that, that's what he chose. He wasn't driven out, um, but his own actions, you know, caused him to leave. He left on his own terms. I shall not be seen by your face, continuing in the scripture, verse uh, 14. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth, and there shall be continual war, vengeance, and retaliation. And this is today's lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of Cain. You could, this would be a great place here in your studies to think about current news articles. And you could write down some of the headlines that you see there because the world is full of the vengeance, war, and retaliation. It's completely full of it. It's all we see here is the ways of Cain. Okay, so let's continue here uh, back in the prophetic word. But it is written, the house of Yahweh, the house of Yahweh, in prophecy. Okay, we're going to read Micaiah 4, 1 through 3. We've read it, we've read it several times, but it's here again. So let's go over it again, and we'll see how we continue here to, uh, to make this connection. 
But in the last days, and we know this is the, the final days of mankind's rule, okay, in the time that, that starts the ending of all sin. This is when sin ends here in these last days. It will come to pass that the mountain, the promotion of the house of Yahweh, will be established in the chief of the nations. It'll, it will be raised above all congregations, and all peoples will eventually flow to it. And remember that unless it was established, it couldn't exist. Unless it was established, we wouldn't be sitting here. So we see it's established. Verse 2, And many nations will come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain, the uplifting of Yahweh, and to the house of the father of Jacob. Notice the underline here, He will teach us His ways. We see what we're taught. We're going to be taught at the great house of Yahweh. We're going to be taught Yahweh's ways. And we will walk in His path because the laws will depart from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Well, you know, and this is written here, so we know what we must do. We know the way that, that we should walk. And, you know, we see that mankind needs a teacher. They've proved for 6,000 years that they've needed someone to guide them. Because every time they've rejected the teacher of righteousness, notice the trouble that they get into. It doesn't bring about blessings. It brings about the curses. We see that. So, you know, that we're, we're going to be taught Yahweh's ways. Okay, back to the prophetic word, verse 3. And he will judge between many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not lift up sword against nation, nor will they learn war anymore. Okay, and in Psalm, if you have the, um, uh, this is a great time to make another uh, uh, note there in the margin. Psalm chapter uh, 29, verse 11, and which reads, Yahweh will give strength to his people, glory, honor, and strength to you. Yahweh will bless his people with peace. Remember, you know, these are the things that Yahweh's people search for. This is what we hope for, for peace. You know, we, we want this peace, but only Yahweh can give it. The gods, they, they don't offer peace. They can't. They don't have the way that brings peace. So Yahweh is going to bless his people with peace, but it's after we're taught here and we learn that war no more. Okay, so back to the prophetic word. Well, notice the house of Yahweh. Notice the house of Yahweh prophecy shows it would not be established until the last days and would prove to heaven and earth what sin brings. And that, you know, reading that, heaven and earth, what should we think about there? The scripture in Deuteronomy 30. Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Another opportunity to make this connection here. The more connections we make, the more And the more times you write it, the stronger it will be in our mind. The easier it will come, the more we'll think about it. Okay, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth. There's a scripture. It uses those same words. As witnesses against you this day, that I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses, because you are free agents to make your own choice between righteousness and evil. Therefore, choose life so both you and your children can live. And, you know, even though Yahweh says you're a free agent, he's telling you what the right choice is. He tells us that. Underline that. Choose life. That's what we want. We want to make that choice. Okay, continuing here, let's go back to the prophetic word. The last days are shown by other of Yahweh's prophets and the Savior Yeshua to be the last, or I'm sorry, the days of the nuclear bomb. These bombs started in the year 1934. Well, when did the patent... For making it, when was it developed? You know, do you have the article there? If you, you could, you could make a copy of it. You could put it right there in that newsletter. Prove it to yourself. Look it up. Back to the prophetic word. Well, the house of Yahweh was established in the same generation. What generation? Well, that generation that those bombs would be invented that could, that would, and they're going to darken the sun. So. This is the time that the prophets foretold of. The house of Yahweh was established in this generation. We should be able to easily name several scriptures. We can name Isaiah 2.2. 2. We can name uh, Micaiah 4.1. But challenge yourself. You know, can you think of some other ones? How about Emotia 3, verse 7? You know, it's got, it has to be prophesied. The prophets, you know, it needs to be prophesied by the prophets um, for, you know, for it to be a true work. And what about uh, Zechariah 5, verse 11? It'll be established in a Babylonian land. Okay, so those are more scriptures that we can connect. Well, the prophecies, back to the prophetic word, 
The prophecies are written for us in these last days. As is written, we have about one year left. You know, then, and that's, you know, as your studies, you know, those things should just jump out. They should jump out at us. Your reward is with Yeshua. You know, and who is Yeshua to us? He's our high priest. You know, he's the head of the body. You know, we can't, we can't live without him. He's the one guiding this work. Um, you know, he's going to judge us. And remember, he's going to bring his reward. He says in Revelation 3, verse 8, I know your works. You know, yes, he is speaking of Yeshua Hawkins, but he's speaking of us also. And as long as our works line up, he, he says, I know your works. So that's a great place to make those notes in, in the margin there. Back to the prophetic word. Let's look at Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work will be. You know, remember the title of this section, which says, why are we here? You know, why are we here? Well, it's to do a work. We need to be involved in the work. Why are we here? You know, to learn righteousness, yes, and, and to be part of this work. Help, this get, help uh, the last day's witness to get, to get this work done. Okay, back in the prophetic word. You no longer have 70 years. There is less than one year left of Daniel's prophecy. Unless you repent of all God worship and convert to Yahweh's righteousness, you won't be a part of the kingdom or the family Yahweh is creating. You know, and Yahweh is creating us here as we learn to overcome sin. You know, and, and the more we resist sin, the more we become like Yahweh. The more righteous we become, the more we become like Yahweh. Okay, continuing in the prophetic word. It is written, Revelation 22, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. My reward, is, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work will be. I always think when I think of that scripture, I think of pastor's words there, and that's what I would write in my side note there, that this was only promised to this work. It's a special promise to this work. I come quickly. Matthew 7, 17, back in the prophetic word, 17 through 23. Likewise, every righteous tree brings forth righteous fruit, but a tree of evil brings forth fruit of iniquity. A righteous tree cannot bring forth fruit of iniquity, nor can a tree of evil bring forth fruits of righteousness. Every tree that does not bring forth righteous fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. You know, and that's the second death. That's the permanent death. That's the permanent death there. Okay, verse 20. Therefore, by their fruits... You will know them. Okay, so we can look at that word fruits. That's a, that's a great time to ask ourselves. Do we look up this word? Do we know what it means? Um, and for greater understanding, fruit means that which originates or comes forth from something. Okay, when we bring forth our fruit, that's why our work should be coming forth from the teachings of the house of Yahweh. It's, it's participating. It's getting in the work. You know, by their fruits, by their teachings, by what they do, you will know them. Verse 21, back in the prophetic word here. Not everyone who says to me, teacher, teacher, will enter into the kingdom of Yahweh, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And Philippians 2, verse 15, that's a great place to put that scripture. In order, as it says, um, in order that you can be blameless and harmless, notice the children of Yahweh, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Okay, let's continue in a prophetic word in verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Teacher, teacher, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and in your name perform many wonderful works? Well, these have not been sent. These are not the ones that are sent to teach in, in, in Yahweh's name. Jeremiah 23, verse 14. Okay, if you, if you want to write that there, Jeremiah 23, verse 14. It says, I have also seen the prophets of Jerusalem, in the prophets of Jerusalem, a horrible thing. They commit adultery, they walk in lies, they turn from Yahweh and follow after the gods. They also strengthen the hands of evildoers so that no one turns back from his wickedness. All of them are like Sodom to me and her inhabitants like Gomorrah. Okay, and remember, Yeshua called these hypocrites. Okay, 23, back in the prophetic word. But then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who practice iniquity. And if we don't know iniquity, iniquity, we can write that on the side note, word number four, uh, 458, iniquity, means illegality, violation of the law, wickedness, wickedness. Those who practice it are evil like the gods. And pastor concludes here, he says, Yahweh bless 
your understanding. And, and as, as I wrap it up here, uh, our classes, I want to remind you here of a quick few points here that we learned throughout these, uh, throughout these six days of teachings. You know, look for the key words and look up their meanings. Hopefully you can see that. Um, but pay attention to the key words. Pay attention to key words and look up their meanings. Read every word. Okay, read each paragraph slowly. Don't skim over anything. Ask the question, what is the point of this paragraph? Find scriptural proof for the statements. You know, and those are the references like we've done. Put titles or headlines in the Yematria, but put them in correctly, and apply them to Yahweh's plan to what the numbers mean. It has to fit the plan of Yahweh. Keep that in mind. Ponder what Pastor is saying to us. And the last point there, use the Israel says to look up Pastor's teaching on a subject in the books of Israel and other House of Yahweh publications. When you do this, brothers, you know, you put, you put forth this effort in studying, you're going to be strong and make it through these dark days ahead. Yahweh bless your understanding. If you all please stand, I'd like to turn it over to the uh, priest for closing prayer. We can raise our hands. We'll close in prayer. Great Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Kwame Titi Hawkins, and I do come before you, Father Yahweh, in unity with the great body of priests of the house of Yahweh in these last days, being a seed of the witness, the great Kwan Yeshua Abel Hawkins, and through our great honorable high priest, Yeshua Messiah. I do come gathered here with your righteous sons, Father Yahweh, the great priests, deacons, and men of your house, Father Yahweh, and the young men. And we thank you, Father Yahweh, for this great opportunity to learn how to study the words of life which are coming from your servant Israel through the prophetic words and newsletters. We do pray, Father Yahweh, that we would take all the teachings we've learned this feast into our, our, our monthly studies as we receive these magazines, these newsletters, and as we continue day to day in our studies, Father Yahweh, that we would be able to use uh, the, these teachings that we've received in, in our growth with you and in, in, in remembering the scriptures, remembering what is written, what was foretold uh, before any of us were placed on this earth, before there was this even this great house to come to, Father Yahweh, it was foretold thousands of years ago and written for us in these last days. And we thank you for your servant Israel, for the great blessing you have given us in giving us a mighty teacher, one who rules as you rule, to teach us your laws and your statutes and your judgments and how to become perfect and righteous like you. And we pray, Father, that you will bless your servant Israel with strength, with all the things he desires to have to help further the work, the great gifts of spirit holy, to raise the dead, to heal the sick, to be able to go without sleep, to further the work, we pray that we would always be a help and not a hindrance to him, your house, and to your great work. And we pray that you would keep us strong and faithful, Father Yahweh, of continuing to take on this perfect righteous character as taught by your great house. We hob you and praise you and thank you for all these things. Complete unity, body of priests, being a seed of the witness of Israel, and through our most honorable high priest, Yeshua Messiah, we do pray. Hallelujah and praise Yahweh.